Welcome to News Talk with Simone Ivani at the International News Channel. Since the discovery of thousands of unmarked graves at former indigenous residential schools, reconciliation efforts have been on the minds of Canadian citizens and politicians alike. In fact, this year Canada celebrated its first official day of reconciliation. Countless politicians have joined in to express their sympathies and dedication to amending relations with the indigenous people of Canada. Despite these outward expressions of support, the long-standing issue of grassy narrows has remained ignored. As a reminder to our viewers, in the 1960s, a paper mill released upwards of 9,000 kilos of mercury into the English and Wabigoon rivers. As a result, the indigenous communities residing in the area who ingested fish from the rivers as well as water from the rivers have faced debilitating medical consequences. Despite the introduction of the English and Wabigoon Rivers Remedition Funding Act by the Wynn government in 2017, which was dedicated to providing $85 million to clean the mercury out of the rivers, the current Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford, has failed to implement the mercury removal plan. Joining us to discuss this issue further is Darshan Maharaja. Darshan is a chartered accountant who worked in India, Africa and the Middle East prior to moving to Canada. Since living in Canada, Darshan has become a political blogger, taking on writing about contemporary Canadian issues and recently, Grassy Narrows has been at the center of Darshan's work. Thank you for joining us today, Darshan Ji. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Firstly, would you like to tell our viewers in your own words what the Grassy Narrows tragedy is? It's a 50-year-old tragedy, actually, and uh, that's why it is of uh, such a grave importance mm -hmm. that uh, more and more people uh, push the government to do what's needed. It has several components. Right now, I'm focusing on one part of it. Uh, what happened was in 1960s and early 1970s, uh, a paper mill, which is located about 100, 150 kilometers upstream from Grassy Narrows, released mercury which they were using in their manufacturing process mm -hmm. into the rivers and this became known by early 70s and after even 50 years the mercury is still there it has not been removed mm -hmm. and initially because people didn't know uh, they were eating the fish uh, that was contaminated with the mercury so the mercury ended up in their own bodies and mercury is a substance that once it enters a person's body it doesn't go away yeah. It can even be transferred from mother to child via placenta. Mm. So it has a very serious uh, health effect, mm -hmm. debilitating you can call it. Yeah. Uh, neurological conditions and there is a whole group of uh, medical issues that arise because of mercury in the body. Mm -hmm. Collectively they are known as Minamata disease. Okay. This is because uh, initially it was uh, noticed first in a place called Minamata in Japan. And uh, the health issue is one providing the uh, medical care facility there, which is federal jurisdiction is another. And then cleanup of the river all the way from the mill, which is still functioning, mm -hmm. all the way to uh, Grassy Narrows and uh, there are uh, three or four other First Nations reserves mm. there. Cleaning up uh, all that water is uh, very important. It's in my personal opinion a matter of international shame for Canada mm. that you know being such a prosperous country we haven't been able to deal with this for 50 years mm. so I just decided to focus on one particular part of it which, yeah. which is just cleaning up the rivers which is yeah. provincial jurisdiction yeah so so there hasn't been any progress on removing mercury at Grassy Narrows or none, some none at all none. now what happened was in 2017 uh, the liberal government of the time in Ontario uh, set up 85 million dollars in funds as you mm, said yeah and then uh, a panel was constituted uh, which included uh, not just people from the government mm -hmm. but also from uh, the First Nations communities mm -hmm. in that area including yeah. Grassy Narrows and four others yeah so uh, the work is supposed to have begun in 2018, but uh, the minister tabled the latest report yesterday in the parliament, and they are still collecting samples three years later. Mm. So you've clearly done a lot of research, and you've written about it a lot too. So what about this story spoke out to you first? It's a humanitarian tragedy. Yeah. And if you think of any other similar 
industrial accidents mm -hmm. or pollution caused by industry. Mm. The record if you check of each incident and how it was then attended to, this I think qualifies as the worst and that hurts me as a Canadian yeah. because we are not just a prosperous country but we are also a proud country mm -hmm. and we want to uh, address any issues mm -hmm. that may arise, preferably they should not arise but if yeah. they do then it should be attended to in a reasonable time frame. 50 yeah. years is by no means a reasonable no, time frame. That's quite a so lot. Yeah. That's what hit me. Yeah. Actually, I didn't know much about it. Mm -hmm. uh, one point while writing a blog, I realized that I don't know anything beyond the headlines. Mm. And then when I dug into it, I realized that there is this $85 million fund. Mm. So I decided to find out what's happening, how much progress has been made. Mm. But uh, as of yesterday, it's clear that uh, no progress has been made in removing yeah. the mercury. So why do you think that the Ford government has failed to implement that plan, that million dollar plan? <laughs> for that. 85 million dollars, yeah. right? It's more than a million dollar it, question yeah, that you are asking. Millions of me. dollars, yeah. yeah. Uh, the answer is in three parts. Okay. And uh, you have to uh, arrive at your own conclusions mm. because there is no clear information. Yeah. So it may be partly speculative on my part. Mm -hmm. But it seems clear that uh, first of all, they have no priority of mm. attending to this. Mm. Now, the reason why I reached this conclusion is because the latest report, which was tabled yesterday, that is 8th of November, it was submitted by the panel on 1st of June. Oh. So there is no urgency to table this and move it forward. Mm. They do it whenever they can get around to it. Mm. So that is lack of priority is uh, the first part of this. Mm. Second part is that even the opposition parties have not uh, taken it up with the government. They mm. have not held the government to account. I have been in contact with all the opposition parties, including mm. the official opposition, NDP, the leader Andrea Horvath and deputy mm -hmm. leader Sarah Singh mm. and the MPP of NDP from that area where Grassy Narrows is located in mm -hmm. his riding, mm -hmm. who also happens to be a First Nations. Yeah. And the only reply I got from him was that uh, they will take it up with the, uh, with the government or with mm. the ministry. After that, there is no follow up. And uh, the leader of NDP, Andrea Horvath, she has not replied at all yeah. to any of my emails or messages. Yeah. Deputy leader Sarah Singh, to her credit, she has uh, replied a couple of times. First time she said they'll just get uh, uh, in touch with the ministry. Mm. And uh, then after a lot of pushing from my end, she has set up a meeting for tomorrow. That's 10th of November. Okay. So I'm supposed to meet her. Uh, okay. We'll see what happens. But I'll try and push uh, the opposition to take this up in the yeah. house, asking why this has not started yet. Yeah. They are still collecting samples after three years. So that is part two of my answer. Part three is that this is not on the radar of the voters or the people, no. broadly speaking. Mm -hmm. Even I didn't know, so I'm not I placing a blame on anyone. Yeah. You can say the media is also responsible for part of this because yeah. they don't speak about it often mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. And because there is no public pressure, no politician feels compelled to act. Ideally, they should act on their own, but mm. <laughs> because there is no pressure, even that uh, factor disappears. Mm -hmm. That's why there has been no action on this so far. Yeah. So how do you think your meeting tomorrow is going to go in that sense then? Well, I'm hopeful. I always yeah. remain hopeful. If she has agreed to a meeting, it was initially set up for one week prior. But then there was a scheduling conflict at her mm -hmm. end, so it was rescheduled. I'm hopeful that once I talk to her why this is important and why this needs to be done, mm -hmm. then uh, she'll take it up with the government. Okay, fair enough. So you did mention all of the health effects of the mercury contamination, but it's been going on for 50 years. So what do you think is going on, or for the people that are living there now, what are the impacts of this mercury today? The impact of this goes way beyond just health, although health is all important. Yeah. What yeah. happened was they had built up a very uh, nice economy around mm -hmm. fishing and tourism. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful place otherwise. Mm -hmm. So there was a thriving e economy there uh, based on fishing and tourism. And once this mercury issue became known, it collapsed. Mm. 
So roughly 90 to 95 percent of the people lost their uh, livelihood there. Mm. And nothing has replaced it because the mercury is still there. You can't have people going there or you can't have any activity there. So economic impact is crippling. Mm. Then the health impact, of course, is there. I'll give you just one example. I yeah, read please. about one young uh, uh, person there. Um, he has a disability that if he's standing at any moment, he can fall down because his brain has been affected so much that it cannot maintain his balance. Mm. So these are the kinds of things that people are being born with, kids yeah. are being born with all these disabilities. So that has been uh, completely devastating mm. for the people of the entire area. As mm. I said, there are five uh, yeah. First Nations reserves there. Grassy Narrows is the main one, so we mm. know it by that name. Yeah. But even the other four have had uh, this impact on their lives. Yeah. Speaking about the cleanup itself, do you think that the English and Wabigun Rivers Remediation Funding Act, if implemented, will be enough to resolve the issues that these indigenous communities are facing? It will resolve the issues partly. Okay. Because there is, as I said, there are three components of this. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the components is that, uh, and this came to light much later, I think in 2014 or 2015, when a worker who had uh, been employed in that uh, factory uh, revealed that he mm. had been asked to uh, bury some barrels filled with mercury mm. on the premises of the factory. Mm. So this w happened in, uh, I think, 1974 or thereabouts. Okay. And this came out in 2014. Mm. So in spite of all the precautions having been taken, like uh, putting vinyl uh, sheets underneath, etc., the mercury is leaching into the ground from the drums. It's been long enough, more than 40 years. Now we are closing in on 50 yeah. years. So the mercury is leaching into the ground and from there via groundwater it is making its way into the rivers. Yeah. So even if you remove all the mercury from the rivers themselves, there is new mercury coming in. So mm -hmm. that also has to be done. Now my understanding is that uh, the, that project is a responsibility of the company that is running the factory mm, now. Yeah. Now the company has also, the factory has changed hands multiple times. But the current owner is responsible for that project. And initially the information I got from the ministry was that their studies are going to be over in summer and that a report should be out in fall. Now we are in fall, once uh, we are nearing the end of fall, I'll start asking Again, where yeah, that report no, absolutely. is. Yeah, I think follow up is like the best way to attack this for sure. Definitely. Yeah. But in your opinion, what needs to be done in order to ensure that the indigenous people who fell victim to the pollutants in the rivers receive justice? Well, the first thing, of course, is to remove the mercury. Yeah. And uh, I spoke to a toxicologist. In fact, oh. this happens to be his specialization. Okay. He has done PhD from the US and he teaches toxicology now at one of the Canadian universities. I spoke to him and he said that uh, there's no way this should have gone three years for just collecting samples. Yeah. Samples collection in a 130 kilometer stretch of river and adjacent areas should have been done much earlier than that. So in order to give justice to the people at Grassy Narrows and surrounding areas, the first thing to do is to start removing the mercury from the rivers mm -hmm. and at the, at the same time uh, follow up vigorously with the company that is running yeah. the factory now so yeah. that that part of the mercury which is leaching into the rivers, that is also stopped. The federal government had announced a plan for making a medical care center there. Oh. Construction is supposed to begin in 2022, but earlier it was supposed to have begun in 2019. Oh. So this is another <laughs> issue that okay. keeps getting pushed down the road. Yeah. Initially it was announced for about $19 million. The people there were not happy. Okay. then a fresh agreement was struck so the total funding now is 88 million mm. but if they start in 2022 the question is when they will finish the construction when and after that running that medical yeah. center is provincial responsibility so there will need to be coordination mm. premier ford in the only uh, reply that he gave to me 
uh, he said that these are multi jurisdictional issues mm. well we know they are and it's not a revelation that they are multi jurisdictional you knew it going in no. so in 3 years you should have sorted them out yeah the same multi jurisdictional issues will crop up once the medical care center is completed mm. the construction is completed mm -hmm. because again the province will have to uh, organize for it to be run on yeah. a regular basis presently grassy neros gets a doctor for 2 days every month the doctor goes from kenora which is like about 200 kilometers mm. uh, from grassy neros and 2 uh, days a month is absolutely nowhere near enough no but i can see the difficulty because if you are a doctor and if you have to stay there permanently then you need to reorganize your entire life yeah so they have to start working on that now how they are going to organize for nurses and doctors and mm -hmm. all the other attending staff to be there on a permanent basis mm -hmm. that's the way to deliver justice to the people at yeah. grassy neros with any kind of luck though the provincial and federal government will need to be on the same page about how this is going to operate are you optimistic about that that it will it will fall into place faster than we think well i believe in being optimistic uh -huh. but being optimistic doesn't mean having, having a hands off approach okay i think more and more voters and more and more ontarians need to start following up with their yeah. elected representatives so that there is enough pressure for them to coordinate with uh, each other and get the job done yeah what other things do you think canadians can do to demand this issue receive more attention well anyone who has access to media should uh, go to media i have i have been lucky i have uh, been my message has been accepted by one radio station and one major oh. newspaper so i was on radio giving uh, yeah. voice to this and issue and your toronto star article right yes that was it, absolutely a wonderful read <laughs> yes i mean it was a moment for me because i knew that now uh, more people are going to uh, be aware of what's yeah. happening or not happening there mm -hmm. So if everybody keeps pushing with whatever resources they have whatever access they have I'm sure this can be resolved. Yeah. The toxicologist that I talked to he said you know this can be done in maybe a couple of years. Okay. Now even if you discount that opinion although you shouldn't because it's a professional opinion mm -hmm. in 5 years at least it should be done. Yeah. Yeah. 5 years is still a good timeline. Yes. Still a fair enough timeline. Yes. Well thank you so much for joining us today Darshan ji. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. This is Simone Ivani and you're watching the International News Channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment to keep up to date on all of the latest content.